Well, James and me are at the British Shooting Show now. I've been here a couple of days. At the minute we're at the Umrex stand. So I'm just going to go around the show and show you what I think is interesting. I'm not going to do so much of the big sort of brands this time just because they get a lot of attention anyway. So I'm just going to try and stick to the smaller companies, um, the ones that maybe wouldn't get as much publicity. Uh, and yeah, see, see what they've got to say. All right, well, second time <laughs> lucky. The first time the audio cut out. So we're with Nigel. How do you, mate? Uh, again, you've seen me wearing Ridgeline on my channel this past year, and I love it. And there's a few new bits of kit out now. I'll just going to give us a talk for it. OK, so new for this year then is we've decided to introduce a new lightweight jacket called the Evolution Jacket. It's the long traditional long New Zealand style. Um, primarily designed for the guys that want to wear smocks but need to have a, a jacket with a full length zip. So this has got an increased water resistance of 15,000. So we've improved the membrane up to a 15,000 hydrostatic head. No, our normal gear normally has a membrane of 10,000. So we've improved that now but we've also increased the breathability rate to 10,000 comes with a standard hood which is removable, long New Zealand style, two hand warmer pockets and an accessories pocket there. So that's the new Evolution jacket. The new Monsoon Classic, all we've done with this, it's the same hardware in um, RL Tech Pro fabrics which has a 10,000 hydrostatic head and 5,000 breathability. We've moved the hand warming pockets down to a more accessible position and then we've introduced an accessories pocket on the top left hand breast pocket. What we've also done this year is introduced a new pair of pants, three layer laminated shell, exactly the same as the Monsoon Classic top. Um, they're called the Monsoon Classic pants. So price point on these, $159.99 for the smock and $74.99 for the pants. Okay, we've also brought in a few more fleeces and, fleeces and um, slightly more technical gear. So one of those is the new Ripstorm top. The Ripstorm stops a mountain shirt and traditionally with a nylon outer, We've introduced nylon outer which has got um, a rip, rip stop fabric and then we've got the big accessory pocket on the front with the two hand warming pockets two way zips on both sides to assist getting on and off but also to assist in ventilation when you get slightly too warm and then we've also got the new um, tempest paddy jacket the nice brown color which is replacing the blizzard jacket from last year slightly different cut but exactly the same polyester um, hollow fiber filled jacket there Looks fantastic gear, thank you very much Nigel. No worries, good to see you again Excellent. Andy. Excellent. I'm with Gwyn now on uh, Enforcer Decoy, so nice to meet you Gwyn. Nice to meet you. Uh, Gwyn's just going to give us a little bit of a talk through about the, what he's got out. Very impressive, most detailed decoys I've ever seen, so take it away. No worries. For 2019 we've got some new decoys. We've got the windsock candles. Also come in grey legs, pink feet. They fold up nice and tight. We've also got grey leg full bodies, pink foot full bodies, and a full range of waterfell duck decoys and kind of goose decoys at the back. All the waterfell, perfectly pink, and made by the Dakota decoys of America. We've got the sole distribution rights for Europe and in the UK, and we'll be taking all this gear all the way over to Germany in March to the RWHO. I'm with Ian at the Cornwall Red Squirrel project. Yep. And we all know I hate red... Uh, you, you hate grey squirrels, I hope. Squirrels. I hope you love red squirrels. <laughs> I love red squirrels. hate grey squirrels with a passion. And uh, these guys are dedicated to bringing the reds back. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about it, Ian. We're based down on the Lizard in Cornwall. Um, we're trying to do something which is quite unique. It's the first ever reintroduction of the Red Squirrel. So the Red Squirrel hasn't been seen in Cornwall since 1981. So it's a big undertaking. And we've been working since 2011 to secure the habitat to um, get a re-release program going. Um, this year, we, and the end part of last year, we took a major step. We got our breeding nucleus in place, which well, hopefully our squirrels will breed and that will give us our, our nucleus for our release program. Yeah, so, so you've got a couple of feeders behind to, to bring in the grey. So as, as part of our work with the squirrel project we've been looking to find more efficient ways of making our job a little bit easier. So I've, I've been working with a, a colleague John and we've, we've come up with uh, these feeders. 
with they've got a couple of interesting designs. So the first design is we put a spinner on the side, just so you can check your accuracy before you even start. That's the you know easy, quick and easy. The second feature of them is this narrow platform. So we designed this so the squirrel when it's sat feeding presents himself in the perfect place for a headshot every time. So you don't have to wait for them to, to get into the right position. You're not sat with their backs towards you and you know that they come in, they sit, take some bait and they're sat perfectly each time. We then introduced the back plate. Um, this is only two mil, but we, we've got a three mil aluminium back plate on them for the sub-12 guns. Two reasons for that. One, if you happen to have a pellet pass through or you have a conservation shot, i.e. you miss, <laughs> all that energy of that pellet is dissipated because it hits, hits on the alley and drops. Yeah. And because the alley's got a little bit of give, it's not steel, it's, it's alley, it won't rust and it, it, it will deform a little bit, but it'll take the impact, save ricochet, yeah, yeah, it saves ricochets, a little bit safer. And secondly, you don't shoot the living daylights out your box. Yeah. You know, there's nothing more annoying than your box getting full of holes at the end of it. <laughs> the next feature we put on is the big deep tray to try and keep all your bait in the tray. Squirrels are messy eaters, so they'll take the bait, they throw it everywhere, there's no tomorrow. And what happens then, instead of feeding on your feeder, so you can get your nice clean shot every time, they go and feed on the floor. Then you've got to wait for them to move themselves around, get in the right position before you can dispatch them. What we don't want, you want to do a quick, efficient job. You want to keep them on your feeder. And then inside the internals, it's double baffled which means all the food is directed down towards the exit hole. Yep. So if your feeder runs out, there's no food left trapped in your feeder. Because what happens if food gets trapped in your feeder, so squirrels can still smell it, and they'll eat, the, eat your box trying to get to that food. You know, the less food's in, the less smells in there, the less chance they're gonna have of destroying your box, shredding your box. Bit of mesh around it, to proof it and gives them a bit of grip to hold on and with the alley around the door frame there as well the exit frame for the bait that also provides a bit of armour in to stop them from getting in yeah it's a great idea I mean my feeder I'll put a little clip in now of what the squirrels did to mine but after like two weeks it was wrecked yeah, um, yeah. and the other thing with this little pin It's got a catch on the top to... He said he's just bent it, there you go. That's still in, in production, so it, it stays shut. And you just need a pin, you don't need a screw or nothing to get in there. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ian. That's uh, great stuff. Nice to speak to you. Cheers, and you. Have a good show. And you. Um, I was expecting it to be flat ground, uh, low pheasants, but no, high pheasants. It flew really well, uh, and that was quite done. And they do pheasants usually slightly differently over there. They do a lot differently. But do they, were they shoot, and you hear a lot about this in France, and we get... So with Mike on the shooting party stand, now you've seen me using PAO scopes quite frequently on the, on the shooting show, um, and there's a brand new first focal plane out now. Mike's just going to tell us a little bit about what's new on it and the specs. Yeah, just uh, launched today uh, at the shooting show is our very first first focal plane scope. The uh, basic attraction of a first focal plane rather than the second focal plane, is that whatever magnification you have the scope at, then the hold over and hold under points remain the same. So that's a really valuable uh, benefit. Historically, first focal planes have been extremely expensive, but uh, this scope, which is a five to 20 times magnification scope, comes in at under 300 pounds retail. It also includes some uh, novel points, uh, a built-in, anti-cant spirit level and the, the rear stats for the illuminated reticle is a push button one. So you just repeatedly push the button for the greater the illumination and there's an auto cutout so you don't have to worry about uh, the battery running out. The turrets are fully lockable and resettable. 
and we have side parallax. The whole package includes the mounts, lens covers and a 7.5 centimetre sunshade, all for under £300. And I'm going to be getting my hands on one of these so uh, you can expect, expect to see me uh, using one in the show in the next few weeks. So thank you very much, Mike. OK, good to see you. Great. Cheers, thank you. I'm at the Eagle Vision stand now. Uh, as you know, one of my favourite airgun brands there is. And you'll have seen the, the video I recently did on the side cam, which is this one. You've got your, your iPhone on there. And I mentioned in, the, in that video that there was going to be a GoPro version. And that one's here. So a very, a very well-built GoPro case, as it always is with the Eagle Vision. A magnetic clip there, your GoPro just slots in and then that just pops back on there. You'll need to change your lens on your GoPro, but I mean, a Hero 4 now, you can pick them up second hand for 100 quid, and sticking the lens on that really isn't gonna cost you that much more. So for, for having the, the quality and the slow motion aspect of that, I would say it really is worth it. So that's what I'm gonna do with mine, and then I might upgrade that to a, a Hero 7 for my uh, normal filming. So I'd say a Hero 4 on this would be ideal. Uh, a, a nice cheap alternative. On Masood's website there's options to build your own scope cam setup so if you want the side cam with the camera you, with the with the phone mount you can do or if you want the GoPro you can do that as well you just build it all add what you want to the basket and uh, yeah it's pretty simple to do so have a look links in the description to the website. Uh, one more thing that he showed me today is a neat little case and it's got foam cutouts you can slot in all your all your bits and pieces in there so that'll help keep my cupboard a little a little more organized so yeah thank you Masood well Masood's also got some upgraded FX Wildcat magazines uh, these cycle better than the FX mags um, the o-rings are easier to change on them and there's also these mounts that can clip onto the side, so I think they go that way. So if you've got your Wildcat um, empty mag, you just pull that one out, put your old one back, and it's just a real quick, easy and simple way of, uh, of changing magazines and storing your spare ones. And it's got those for Edgun as well. These are alloy rather than plastic, so really nice high quality. <laughs> Well, I'm with Jamie on the uh, AIM cam stand, so it's good to meet you, Jamie. Yeah, good to meet you. Yep. And uh, these are some pretty innovative glasses. You've seen me using the GoPro when I've been shotgun shooting, but you don't really get to see the amount of lead or... The breath. same view. Yeah, you don't get to see the same view that I'm seeing. Mm. And these glasses give you almost a, an identical 100% true vision of what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, so take it away, Jamie. Yeah, well, that was the idea. I'm a gamekeeper from Derbyshire. Um, we stood in a field, it started six years ago, we did a, a long distance shot, great lead and somebody said why can't we play that shot back as we saw it. Started thinking on, on those lines, we realised one thing we all use when we're hunting and shooting and when we're shooting down a shotgun is our eyes. We all have the same field of view, so we did a study on our eyes, we took the lens from our eyes and we put that into a Sony 1080p full HD 30 frames per second camera. They then made a mounting system, right eye dominant or left eye dominant, that allows the camera that's capturing the same field of view that our eyes capturing to line up with a river, river, river gun or the weapon. It can be pistol, bow, or in this country, predominantly shotgun. Um, and way that way we do that is put them into the shooting glasses with interchangeable lenses. You charge the glasses up and they go for two hours. If that's not enough, it's a cell phone, mobile phone battery, so any mobile phone battery charger will run an aim cam. Just plug it in, it'll work. Your in-car charger, it works. Simple one-touch press. Fantastic audio in the, in the aim cam as well. So all I have to do is click, and out of my peripheral vision, I can see what I'm looking at. To line the camera system up, we then worked out how to do that. We saw a drone flying round, and we used a live stream chip from a drone put the chip inside the aim cam and the aim cam then live streams its view to any mobile phone or cell phone. Um, all you have to do is press the back button here, turn the blue when the blue light comes on, that is now transmitting its view to your cell phone. Download the aim cam app, pair the aim cam glasses with your cell phone. So all you do is you search in your Wi-Fi settings, you find the, the, the particular aim cam, I open up that, that app, I press the live stream button and now you can see what I'm seeing. 
once you've done that you can it means somebody can stand behind you or even have the aim cam strut live stream behind watching what the shooter sees for the first time analyzing it so none of this over your shoulder give it more lead you behind it they can see exactly as you took the shot because you've calibrated that camera to your line of sight down your particular weapon and that's how the aim cam works Brilliant. there you go thank you very much no problem <laughs> Well, we're with Tony once again, a familiar face on the channel, and there's a couple of new scopes from MTC, so as usual, Tony's just going to give us a talk for Lovely, thanks very much. Right. Okay. Uh, what we've got here is the uh, 3 to 10 by 40, so it's what's called ultralight. And what we had, we had a quite a lot of success last year with the Mamba light. Yeah. So we decided we would make it lighter still, so this is ultralight. So what do you call it, you know? Um, and We've taken it down to under a pound. It's, uh, I think it's uh, 520 something grams of weight, extremely lightweight. But we've put, a, but to use an inch tube, we're using very high quality glass in there to get the light refraction levels back. So we've got some beautiful lenses in there. We've got a lightweight aluminium body, a tiny little small light scope, but it's got all the features. We've got a side parallax, 10 yards to infinity, illuminated reticle, uh, small caliber ballistic reticle in there, so multiple aim points, yeah. and we've also got our magnetic fit covers with our two times magnifier on the side. So we've got all the features, beautiful light transfer, and yet a super lightweight and tidy little scope. Not everybody wants to have big monster scopes, no, no. and three I'm to ten. That more and more. Yeah, exactly. It's coming. It's a bounce back in fashion from these big uh, 50 mil objective, 55 objective, yeah. sometimes 60. Um, because this, with the quality of the lenses, it gathers quite enough light yeah. for your normal shooting. Brilliant. Is that second focal plane? This is second focal plane, that's right, okay. which is what most people want. And that means that the reticle stays the same size, so if you were zooming up, if your, your point of impact could move if you were using the lines. Yeah. But what you find with only 10 power is that you don't really don't zoom up and down that much. Yeah. So you don't really need a first focal plane for most shooting. Yeah. We also do a version of this uh, with a fixed parallax. So if you're not shooting uh, 2.2 rimfire or an air rifle, PCP, uh, you might be shooting a, a full ball rifle or something of bigger calibre, in which case you're extending the range out to you know, 100, 200, 300 yeah. metres. So we use a fixed uh, parallax on this one, no parallax adjustment, and we put in a simpler reticle. We put in either a, a, a mill dot or we put in a duplex reticle. But again, the same level of quality of glass, same lightweight scope, and just a very nice, small package. From the simple scopes, um, very, very useful, but this is uh, a little bit more technical. Yeah, this is the other end, really, of the, of the design ideas. So we're now back to a traditional, what well, is now traditional, 30 mil object, uh, scope, 30 mil tube, 50 mil objective, so good light gathering, which you need because this is a first focal plane scope. So you need good light gathering on the first focal plane. Uh, and what this means is as you zoom up and down, the reticle stays in relation to the target. So and if you've zeroed at different aiming points at one magnification, they remain as you zoom up and down, which can be very useful. Um, and we put that in this tiny little package, um, 325 pounds, I think they are now, which yeah. is a very good price. You know, I've noticed recently the price of first open planes has come down so much. It's it has. It, they were generally in the 600 pound market to 500 pounds, certainly yeah. start point, but the but the price point has dropped. And there's a little bit more engineering in the first focal plane scope. Uh, also, they were quite harder to illuminate, but this one I'm glad to say has illumination on it as well, which is an extra feature which you don't always find in every first focal plane scope. Yeah. And so that's the um, MTC Cobra F1. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. Very Good interesting. Danny. Thank you. Now we've got a, a new Brocock, and again, Tony's just going to give us a talk through. Yes, yeah, so we brought out the Brocock Bantam um, probably about four years ago now, and we've been developing it ever since. And we got to last year's version, which is the Bantam uh, Sniper, uh, which is, you know, the um, Sniper HR, which is an absolutely regulated version, redesign of the shroud, redesign of the regulator body, and the stock. And we've been developing that ever since. We had some phenomenal success last year when a Brokop Bantam won the Extreme Ventress uh, from a guy from Patagonia. Which is amazing. <laughs> um, so we've used a lot of that and we've built that into the guns. And we also got here today the uh, Bantam Sniper HR, but in a laminate stock. So we've gone to a wooden stock again for, for Brokop. And I hope you'll agree it's a beautiful looking object. 
it is a, yeah. it's a good look, I must admit. Yeah. yeah. Balance of the gun is fantastic. It's an easy gun to shoot. Uh, it does 450 yeah. shots in uh, 12 foot pounds yeah. and still does 60 shots in full power, uh, which is touching on you know nearly 40 foot pounds in 2.2 with a standard length barrel. So, very nice rifle. I always remember Brocock being very sort of lightweight and sleek, but I, I do prefer the chunkier, chunkier gun. Yeah, we've gone really in the last five years that we've owned Brocock, uh, we've developed it enormously. And this is where we've ended up with, and really, I think it's sort of uh, the sort of day state experiences we we can't do cheap, uh, unexciting yeah. rifles. We have to develop the brand, and this is where we've gone with it. Semi bullpup, of course, so you've got a, a much shorter action, at least four inches shorter than any comparable rifle, uh, which means you've got to raise the scope up. Sorry, mate. No, I mean, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And um, so it's fully regulated, adjustable cheek piece, adjustable. Yes, if we just put the gun up for a second. Um, so what we've got here, um, you've got the regulator inside, and that's indicated by the regulator gauge. We have a, a big, fat, shrouded barrel to reduce the noise. This one has a carbon fiber bottle to reduce the weight. Uh, we have a match grade trigger with a paddle safety catch in front. Uh, side cocking lever and this oh, has a new bolt, yeah big bolt a new design of hammer to make it easier to cock that was one of the criticisms of the early bro cocks yeah. so we've we've adjusted that on the latest models and all this adds to what is just a beautiful hunting package rifle yes yeah, sure very well balanced Cheers, Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. Cheers. Well, it was a brilliant show. Thanks for watching and thanks for everyone who uh, was happy to talk to me. Yeah, looking forward to next year.